The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're glad to have you here with us today, and I hope everybody is doing well and staying well. Um, we're glad to have uh, Crystal Huey with us today, and we're going to go through um, just how to stay clean during a global pandemic. I think it's a really big question that everybody's worried about, especially with some people returning back to the office and um, back to work. So I'm um, glad to have Crystal here with us to um, give us a lot of great knowledge. Um, I do want to let you know that we are recording this webinar. Um, it will be available on our trustlocal.org website afterwards, um, so you can feel free to refer back to it as you need to. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the question box as we go. Um, Crystal has some um, uh, times built into the presentation where we can uh, answer some questions throughout. Um, so please feel free to ask anything that you might have questions about as we go along. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Crystal and uh, let her get started. Okay, great. So, um, Anna, they can see my screen, correct? Yes, they, they can. your PowerPoint? Yes. Oh, awesome. Um, so I just want to say good morning and thanks for tuning in. This is a different kind of uh, platform for me. Normally, I'm used to teaching through a small group, so this is really uh, different, but we're just going to roll with it, and I'm encouraging you to ask lots of questions. To tell you a little bit about me, I started the business back in 1997. I wanted a way to stay home with my son and be his room mom and Cub Scout leader and go on field trips. And so I needed a way to make money but still be have the flexibility. And so that's what I did. And so we've been around for a long time. Um, we are MBE and EDGE certified. And um, we are part of an association called the International Sanitary Supply Association. And that's important because they've been around for 90 plus years. Uh, they're global and they have a division called the Global Bio Risk Advisory Council, who provided a certification as soon as the virus came out to allow us to kind of refresh on some old things and learn some new terms and terminology and make sure that we're up to date with killing viruses and keeping bacteria at bay. Uh, our core values, I'm going to read them <laughs> just in case. I miss something, but um, we build to, we hire to, um, we live by building lasting relationships. We always strive to exceed our customer expectations. We passionately pursue excellence and we positively uh, create, innovate, and inspire. We have uh, different awards that we've been, we've been on the top 50 minority business list with Columbus Business First since uh, 2014, I think. And we've been an honoree, um, I've had the pleasure of being an honoree for Smart Business Women, Smart Business Award. I think um, last year, the year before, the Ohio NBE Business Honoree and some other things like that. And we, we've been speaking, okay, technically it's me, but I feel like when we're in a group, we're all together. Uh, so I've been speaking to groups for several years now. I think my first seminar was back in 2012. And because we've been around so long, we get a lot of questions um, and we don't have the answer to everything always, but we'll try really hard. So as we go through the webinar, please feel free to ask your questions. If it's something that applies to the group, I'm happy to answer it. If it's something I don't know, I'll get back with you later. And if it's something that's very specific to you or your industry, then I might circle back to you later um, and I'll have that answer within it, you know, two to three days. So with that. <laughs> We are super proud of our, um, it's called GBAC, is the Global Bio Risk Advisory Council certification. So that was me looking very studious because it took a few hours to complete that and it's a certification we have to maintain every two years. This talks a bit about our um, expertise. We mainly, um, primarily take care of construction sites. We do have a vacant apartment property portion of our business, but that is at max capacity. Uh, so at our construction sites, we of course do construction cleanup, disinfection cleans, rough finals, our commercial cleaning. We have buildings uh, mainly concentrated downtown and short north. Um, we kind of have some all the way around 270 as well. Same thing, disinfection cleans, janitorial services, uh, office retail space, restocking services. And we love our part of the business, our advisory service. Our schedule um, is at max capacity. 
So we have been uh, doing advisory appointments to kind of stop by and check in. The cleaners around the uh, city have been doing really great. So sometimes we can just add little tweaks, process improvements or product recommendations that's been really helpful to our clients. And then we also have an adv advisory uh, consultation portion of our business because people helped us along the way to help us be here 20 plus years and get through the pandemic as well as back in 2008, that was rough. And so we want to turn around and give that back and, and share and help others get to their dreams. So that's us. During this time, uh, I'd love it if I could see you all, but it's okay. We'll do it virtually through the chat. And I want to encourage you um, to just kind of speak out or, or share your information. I was trying to figure out if I have business owners or if I have work from home or parents or singles trying to stay safe in the bubble. Um, so please feel free to you know, type in and say who you are or where you're from or what your interest is. Anna, do, do they come, will the questions pop up immediately or? Yes, yeah, we should be able to see their questions as soon as they type them in. Um, I'm looking at our attendees. It does look like I see a few um, business owners that I know um, and then maybe a few other. Um, I see a someone is an owner of a home-based business. Um, so that was one of the responses that we just had. I'm from Bob, and um, you know, we, it looks like we may have a few other, um, you know, variety of attendees joining us. Okay, because I'm not seeing those, and I know it is operator error on my part. So <laughs> that's okay. I'm okay, well, I'll do my best. Oh, thank you. I'll do my best to speak to the business owners. Are they cleaners or other business owners who need to keep their office space and building safe? Um, my my understanding is that there are office um, owners who need to keep their space safe. Okay, great. All right, and then I, I only have three rules. Um, is to please ask questions. I don't want to just monotone like um, Snoopy and Linus and blah, 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 blah. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want to be very specific. And please be open. Some of the information you may already know, some may be new, or some may be for someone else that's listening, and be supportive. There aren't any dumb questions, not at all. So we want to be supportive of one another and um, just kind of go like that. Our webinar objection, objectives are three, to define the difference between clean, sanitize, and disinfect, to you know, kind of discover with the different PPP, PPE, the protective personal protective equipment, what should I use and why? And then how do I create a safe travel path for myself and my family and my crew as I'm navigating these next, what probably is gonna be several months. So first, we wanna kinda of just discuss it. Um, you know, after the governor's report last night, this question kinda of answers itself, but on and off through these last several months, we've had people say, you know, is it still relevant? You know, do I really need to care? Do I have to wear the mask? You know, must I wash my hands uh, continuously? So I wanted to see if anyone had any feedback about that. And Anna, just feel free um, as they're typing or if, if anyone types in a response to share that with me. Oh, and do I really need to social distance? That's been a big one that we've got. Sure. So, Crystal, just so you know, um, we had one attendee said that they um, teach, sorry, one, let me get back to it really quickly. I just clicked out of it. Um, they conduct classes in their home-based office. And then another participant said that they work for a nonprofit that needs to make certain the office locations are safe, but this individual is working from home. Okay. All right, so later on in the webinar, we're gonna talk about how to create a safe travel path and who holds the responsibility for um, keeping everyone safe. Uh, because we have some businesses that have been really responsive and flexible, providing PP, protective equipment, providing, um, hey, this is a plan, this is what we're gonna do, and this is who is accountable for it. And we've had other businesses who had a different kind of response. So those are great questions, and we're gonna talk about those a bit later. Um, one thing I wanted to kind of emphasize, this was taken from about a week ago or so, um, is the R number, the reproduction ratio. And so I didn't know if everyone already knew how it's calculated, why having a reproduction ratio above one is problematic, and how Ohio is trending. But I'm going to say that 
everybody on the line is pretty savvy about staying connected to Governor DeWine's um, broadcast. So our reproduction rate is slightly above one in our different counties. And that's important because it basically is how far an or how much an infected person would spread it to someone else. And we want that spread to be lower. So we really want our number to be lower. So sometimes as you're looking at them throwing out different numbers, what's the dwell time, what's the R number? Google is like my best friend. So you can go to Google and bring it up. Just make sure you're looking at a reputable website. There is all kinds of information out there that I've seen and some of it is wrong. So it's great to stay with the CDC's website, the EPA, or it has an awesome resource for these questions. But the R number is something that wearing the mask, social distancing, washing our hands is gonna help tremendously lower it by following those things. So Anna, any other questions in there? I don't see any right now, so I will make sure that I let you know. Okay, <laughs> all right, so our first objection is to define, clean, sanitize, and disinfect. So I'm not sure if anyone knows the difference already. So I'm gonna slowly move to the next slide just in case someone wants to share. Um, we get this question probably the most, what's the difference? Um, as you're, and why is it important? So as you're learning how to keep your space safe, you wanna know the difference between something that's being clean, something that's being disinfected and something that's being sanitized. Cleaning is the actual removal of foreign objects. It is the best way to stay safe. It's the best way to keep countertops and things safe, just some good old soap and water. So as you see in the description, um, you can use hand sanitizer. That's a great option, but the best thing is just to wash your hands. We wash them in the morning, wash them before you put on gloves, wash them before eating, wash them before preparing food. Just do the happy birthday song twice, which is 20 seconds. And we need to make sure people get front and back, side to side. Um, and it goes the same for different surfaces. Sometimes just some soap and water, washing down a wood table or washing down a countertop. That is one of the best ways to remove anything that could be on that surface. And, oh, and special tips. We had, um, we had some questions about, uh, is it, do I have to go out and find antibacterial soap? There was a bit of a run on it back in March and April and people were um, kind of worried because they weren't getting antibacterial soap. But it's, that's it exactly, it's antibacterial, it's not antivirus. Good old soap and water will take care of what you need. Um, there's not really anything proven, I've included links in the PowerPoint, which you'll get later, and you can look at some of the research behind that. But again, antibacterial soap, antimicrobial soap, they're not for viruses, so hey, Soap and water is your friend. And then uh, with hand sanitizer, one of the questions we've had is, can I just use that? It's so much easier. You know, a lot of them, you know, bath and body smells so good. That's great, but you wanna make sure that you get the germs, the foreign objects, the dirt, the grime off of your hands. So what can happen is you can put the hand sanitizer on top of, you know, some grime or something that's there and it's kind of trapped in there. That we don't want that. So you can over, like over hand sanitize um, by not washing your hands in between. But in the meantime, if you can't get to soap and water and there's no visible dirt on your hands, hand sanitizer is great. Uh, sanitize. Sanitizing reduces bacteria on a surface. This is important because some of the products that we've seen come out in the last several months especially if they are, um, some of them have been very well advertised and they're not killing germs. Disinfecting is killing those germs. Sanitizing is reducing them. If I'm gonna spray a little something, something, I want to kill the germs. So I'm gonna go with you know, my tried and true Lysol, Clorox. Or at one point, when we, we looked at the active ingredients on the back of the label of my uh, almost empty spray can, and then I found a corresponding product with that string. Sanitizing is fine. Um, there's some different products that have been out with different claims of how to keep a surface safe for a specific amount of time, but I really prefer to just disinfect it. Unless it's a food surface, now food surfaces are different. If you're preparing your food on there, 
you do not want anything extra getting into your food source. So you want to be mindful there. One of the best things we're encouraging our clients to do is read your label. Um, the important part about putting the product on the surface is dwell time. And some of you may know what that is. Uh, dwell time is just like it says, it's the amount of time that a product needs to be on a surface to do the job that it's promising it will do. One of the first things we train people to do when they come to be one of our cleaning champions is read the label. We're going to teach you how to read the label, but we want you to read it on your own as well. We've had people who want to just spray something on and just like the commercial, you wipe it off. Well, that's not good because that product might need five to 10 minutes to actually kill and do what it's supposed to do. So you really want to read that label. We've also seen over these last several months fluctuation in the um, strength of the different products. So some of the products that we've used forever, uh, their dwell time changed on them. I don't know if it was necessarily a criteria, a criteria that they had or because um, they were coming in smaller bottles, but there was a product that the dwell time was seven minutes and it increased to 10. And if we hadn't been reading that, we might've missed out on something and the virus is invisible. So we wanna have that, uh, we wanna be assured that it's it's killed, it's done. So again, uh, with this product in particular, we've seen it advertised very heavily and we've seen some great reviews for it. You just wanna be mindful of how you use it because sometimes people thought, I can spray this on the surface, it's good forever. It, and it does stay very well past multiple touches, but you still wanna do the instructions and, and be absolutely sure about what's being protected. Disinfect, this is the great one. It kills uh, and inactivates both bacteria and viruses. And this is what we wanna do. Um, we want to kill all those bacteria and viruses, and we want to make sure that they're gone. We have a protocol in place where we're disinfecting three times a day, which seems like a bit of a hassle, but we just want to be sure. Just in case we didn't kill it in the morning, we're going to hit it at noontime, and we're going to hit it at the end of the day. So for us, again, we built easy adjustments into what we were already doing every day. Um, we have our touch points that are disinfected as soon as we start our day, or for me, get into the office. At lunchtime, we go ahead and spray stuff down. Our team, they spray down all their equipment, all their spray bottles, uh, their totes, vacuums, mops, everything. And then at the end of the day, just to make sure, sure I'd rather have layers of protection than to not do as much and miss out. And again, we're gonna say it again, read the product label. Sometimes things change or sometimes We didn't know it also did this. So just read your product labels. You want to make sure with your products that you verify that it is EPA approved. And this is why. Um, the CDC is who we hear most about uh, because that is the Center for the Center for Disease Control. But the EPA is actually the driver behind the effectiveness, the efficiency, the testing of the product. And I've included a link for that. They've got some great information. The EPA label is what we want to look for on the cleaning products. It is teeny tiny. I had to get out my glasses and a magnifying glass, but it is on there. And what you want to look for is the little teeny tiny number that you're seeing on the, um, on the slide. It should have an EPA number that you can then follow the link and go online and it will tell you what your, that your product is listed and that it's effective. And again, we've seen um, counterfeit products over the last several months or products with claims that we're not sure they can support. But when I see this EPA number, I can trust that. I know that this product is gonna keep me, my family and my team safe. So online ordering, it is uh, wonderful and it's increased a lot as you know, we've had stay at home orders and um, needed to just make sure we change how we do things, um, but just, please make sure you're pulling it from the products from a reputable source. Your local gro grocery stores or restaurants, uh, going to eBay or Amazon, both of those are great. We've seen counterfeit websites, counterfeit products. Um, we've had people, especially before, who are having issues with pricing. Some things have gone up. We've seen a 40% increase just in disposable gloves, but 
supply and demand, we get that, we understand that. But back in the beginning, we saw um, products going for 10 times as much as they should have been going for. So you just want to make sure, or um, products that got lost in other countries on their way here. So you just want to make sure that it's a site that you know, that you trust, um, and preferably use a, um, like a, the American Express has them, like a disposable credit card, just to protect yourself and be safe, because there are scammers out there doing different things too. So fogging is something that we've seen from the very beginning beginning of the pandemic. We get a lot of questions uh, about it. We do have this technology, so we are providing that to our clients. And we saw um, in the beginning, we saw different people who wanted to be able to have that technology, but maybe didn't take the time to train with the ISSA um, to get the proper knowledge behind it, to get the proper products behind it. So there's a difference. Uh, some of the fogging machines out there are for, they're kind of for mosquito fogging, so it's a different size of particle. And then some of them for disinfecting, it's a different size particle. And I wrote down my notes just to make sure I told you absolutely correctly. So for the fogging machine, the difference is it's called, uh, the, the uh, measurement is called a micron. And a fogging machine can be anywhere from 50, on down microns. We like to see our product tip is around a 10. And what that means is that as this fogging mist goes out, then it's gonna evaporate in the air. So not only is it gonna get all the touch points, all the surfaces, you know, it's gonna get uh, under the table or the backs of chairs or the bottoms of desks. It's gonna get all of that, but it's gonna evaporate in the air. What we have seen is um, some people were purchasing misters and misting is usually around 200 microns or pretty much anything over 50. What that means, have you ever gone outside on a hot, humid day and you just feel sticky and, and gummy or like you go out into the fog and you feel like, wait, I can tangibly feel this. That's the difference with the mist. The mist will eventually pull on the surfaces. It'll cause condensation and it'll get things wet. So you don't want that, especially with computers and, um, pretty much anything, that is just not good. So we wanna encourage people that if you do hire a service that is going to use fogging, please make sure that they are properly trained, they're using the proper equipment, um, and that they're certified to do that kind of um, cleaning. Not every place needs that level of cleaning. Uh, we've had several of uh, people ask us, hey, do I need to do that this for um, my location? not necessarily some good old Lysol spray um, or Clorox spray, you know, good old spray disinfectant will do you just fine. Unless you have a larger place or your medical or children, different things like that where um, nursing homes, they, they may need the fogging technique. But for most people, and I've, I'm seeing it back out of stores now, so for most people, just find some can spray and some EPA approved disinfectant and just spray your things down. And, and you'll be just fine. Okay, so our next. Crystal, we did get one quick question. Did. Yes. Um, someone asked, how about ozone generators? They heard that some hotels use ozone generators in rooms prior to the next guest. Don't know if you have any thoughts on that. So I've had, we've had some, some interesting questions and discussions around that, and because that ties into the fogging as well. Um, I would want to talk to them offline to make sure uh, that I'm specifically addressing their question. But sometimes with ozone, um, they would just need to make sure that they're using the right product. So with the foggers, the ozone, sometimes the, um, what is it? It's a, uh, there's like a, a time where for the product to be used and then everything's clear for you to go in. With the fogger, you have to use specific products to make sure, hey, five minutes later, people can enter into that area and they're just fine. The ozone is the same thing. Um, it, it can be, if it doesn't have the right product in the right setting, it can be um, harsh on people who have respiratory issues, like harder for asthma, people who are a little more sensitive to products. So I would just encourage them to, it's, it's a great option. They just have to make sure that they've got the proper product for it, 
the proper um, level of having that hang in the air and, and getting it out of the air before the next person comes in. Because uh, we have seen people, not with the ozone, but with the fogging, use it, and then it was caused, their frequency was too high, and the products, they were substituting a product that was not dissipating as it should have been. So it was killing all the germs, but it was causing an irritation to some of their clients and some of the, um, the owners in that uh, particular facility. So mm -hmm. just... I, I'd love for them to email me afterwards so I can make sure I'm speaking specifically to their question because I don't want to say no and I, and I don't want to say yes without getting their specific information. It's just a great, the ozone is a great option as well. It just depends on your specific space as to whether or not you would need that. I know I could spray some Lysol, which is just my favorite at the moment. Um, it's got nice fragrance to it, so it's not like you don't get choked up. But I can spray some Lysol, use some good old Clorox wipes, and I'm good. Uh, so I, I'd really love to dialogue more about that offline. That's Great. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, and thank you for the question. Um, I really miss seeing y'all's faces, but it's okay. Uh, so objection number two, we're going to talk a bit about the personal protective equipment, what works and why. The question we get quite often is, what are we using? Um, because we have our employees out at construction sites, offices, and whatnot. Um, our top four are, are you know, spray and wipes. Because uh, spray is just so easy, and wipes are just so convenient. We have those things stashed everywhere. Before you leave out the house, I've got them in the cars. We have them in the office. They're everywhere. Uh, hand sanitizer, mask, and gloves. And so those are the four that we're going to discuss today. And so before we talk about the PPE, we want to emphasize again that please just encourage people to wash their hands. Uh, we had this great statistic from our uh, bio risk class that said up to 80% of infections can be spread by hand contact. And so we really want people just to wash their hands because that's going to take care of a lot. And you would think after all of this knowledge and information and the governor's been on that people would automatically do that. But I'm sad to tell you that just two weeks ago, I saw a young lady go into the restroom. We were social distancing. She's on one side, I'm on the other. And I saw her leave out because I was waiting before I opened my door. And she left out and didn't wash her hands. What in the world? <laughs> so we're going to just keep saying it. Please encourage everybody to wash their hands. The um, really cool uh, other a graphic that we got from ISSA is this one. There's different routes of transmission. Of course, you know, contact. So for right now, uh, we have to do virtual hugs, elbows, pretend that. Um, that's about it. Hopefully, handshakes will come back eventually, but not right now. Uh, there can be uh, contact through objects. So we've had to sadly retire our candy dish in our office and um, even our pen pencil hub. Uh, we don't do, we have coffee, but it's the K cups and we have wipes uh, next to them for that. Even the cups are spaced out. So, anywhere where you think you're going to touch something that somebody else is going to touch. If you've noticed, um, restaurants are using the throwaway menus. Um, there's no more ketchup or salt and pepper on the table because they're common points of contact. Droplets, uh, airborne. I think I had some other examples of those too. So droplets, of course, you know, if somebody sneezes or coughs or sometimes people speak with enthusiasm <laughs> and some droplets can come out from that. So it can, spatial, physical distancing is important just to make sure that if for some reason something came through their mask, which we'll talk about in a little bit, um, you're not close to them for that to drop on you. Airborne, um, we've seen some different reports come out about airborne, which is why some of the restaurants have actually put a type of mask, per se, over their vents to make sure that as that air is being circulated, it's not, it's not um, hurting anyone, or they're uh, changing the filters that they're using to filter out anything that might be in the air. Common vehicle, vector-borne, vector-borne insects, so I don't think I've seen that yet, but information daily is changing. And again, we want to say um, CDC had this really great uh, printout. We put this up in our office, washing hands saves lives. And we, we want to emphasize again, uh, we see a lot of this. That is not completely washing your hands. We want to 
get this, get in here, get the front and back. And we like to emphasize, get here too, just in case something dribbled on down. So we just want to, again, emphasize washing hands. So the virus um, is not like Houdini, it can't get into your body without a portal. So while we're being cautious, we want to also make sure people are calm. And we, the virus has to have an intake. So it's got to get in through your eye, nose, or mouth. I never realized how many times a day I touched my face until all of a sudden I couldn't. And then honestly, I put my mask on and I get itchy. So I've learned to kind of do different things to uh, take care of an itch so that I'm not touching my face with my hands. One of my favorites still is disinfectant spray or wipes. Again, make sure that the EPA number is on the back and identify cost per ounce. I've seen all of a sudden wipes are everywhere. And sometimes it might say, oh, it's $2.99, but then it's $2.99 for like this much, where if I order it from Sam's or Costco or Amazon, I'm gonna get a better price. Walmart has great pricing as well. So just kind of be mindful about that. Um, and we, we want to do something that's easy. Uh, I'm 55, so all of a sudden I have to wear a mask. I can't touch my face, and I'm having to, you know, spray stuff down. So we want to really keep it easy. We want to keep it simple. So I sashed wipes in places where I thought I'm reaching for like my um, car control. So my wipes sit in the thing right under it. That way in the morning, I just wipe it down and at night I wipe it down. I don't have to change a lot of my habit to stay safe. And so that's why with our team, we're telling them, I'll just spray the stuff down before you start, spray the stuff down at lunch. And then at the end of the day, because it's an easy adjustment that you can make to stay safe. We um, had been some, having some challenges finding wipes. Honestly, they popped up over this past week. They seem to be everywhere, so we're good with that. But we have been encouraging people. We've seen a difference in supplies depending on where you're at in the city. Uh, there for a while, we were traveling across town to a specific store that always seems to have a great stock of everything. So check with your friends and family. Their um, local store may have plenty of stock of everything in yours. You know, shelves might look uh, like old Mother Hubbard's cupboard if you there. So just kind of ask around and um, they should be able to share that information. We also want to encourage people to go to uh, Big Lots, the dollar store. Sometimes not always as cost effective, but sometimes when we're out, we're out. We'll, we'll pay a decent price to be restocked. Stables and Office Max have been helpful. Their prices have been really great. And uh, I just love Bath and Body. If I'm gonna wear, if I'm gonna be putting on some hand sanitizer, it's gonna have a great scent. Um, I was there for a while having to create my own. So again, just follow the uh, do-it-yourself recipes, but make sure you're on an approved website. And then we put a little um, aromatherapy oil into ours. Again, because if I'm gonna make these extra steps, it shouldn't feel like punishment. So I put some great fragrances in it and we were passing those out to our team to make sure everyone had what they needed. So just make it fun. Um, hand sanitizer, uh, sometimes people are asking like, do I have to put it, take, you know, put it on all these other times? So if you can't wash your hands um, before you're preparing food, because we had people going camping and uh, kind of cookouts and things like that, you still want to use hand sanitizer when you're outside. Uh, of course, after using restroom, if for some reason you can't wash your hands, uh, some of our guys at the job sites, the porta potties, you're in the porta potty, you use the hand sanitizer, then you have to touch the door on your way out. So we made sure they had it for outside of that. And the big one is before, before you put on a mask and after you take off, or before you put on the mask and before you take off the mask, you should use hand sanitizer. And oh, one of our favorites is getting the hand sanitizer. This I will spend a little bit more on just to kind of support the local businesses. Our old office was right across the street from High Banks. And we thought, hey, this is a great reason to go get good grubs. So we went over there and they have uh, their little whiskey bottles or something. It just looks really cool. So it made us feel good that we were staying safe and then we could help our business as well. And um, when we were making our own, 
We did see a lot of recipes with the aloe vera gel. For us, that seems extra sticky, so we use witch hazel. And again, we put in some aromatherapy just to make it smell good. So for masks, we've seen a variety of masks come out, a variety of materials. I think I have got some examples that are somewhere, which of course are nowhere near me. Oh, okay. Nope, still not there. All right, so our favorite material is still cotton based on our research. Um, the cotton seems to be more breathable, especially now that it's so hot outside. And um, we've seen um, some that were more of a, like a poly blend of some sort, which were really comfortable, but we do something called a sneeze test. If it's a, a more thin material like the, the poly blend was, it was kind of like a nylon polyester blend of something. We took a, just a water spray bottle held it like this and did this. We saw the water through to the other side, it's not good. So I'm thinking, well, if somebody sneezes, you know, you're toast. So you just wanna make sure that if it is a, a more slim material, do the sneeze test and make sure that if for some reason you did have some symptoms that you're not gonna spread it that way. So, and we also have different types. We have the disposable because they're just lightweight, easy to use. We have the cotton ones and the Ohio Bureau of Workers' Comp just sent us a bunch. Thank you, Governor DeMine. So we got a bunch of great cotton ones and then we just say, hey guys, whatever you wanna have works best. Um, so yeah, just, we don't have a preference necessarily, it's more individual. And we have had some fun with our masks. So again, if I'm gonna have to wear a mask, then I'm gonna make it fun for me. So we've got like a little Wonder Woman and some Superman and of course some OSU, so all kinds of things. But it, we're just trying to make it, um, so this is a habit we need to have for a while. We wanna make it so it doesn't feel like drudgery. And we want to also uh, make sure that people understand the reusable mask, you can generally wash those every three to four days. That was the last information that we read about it. Uh, so I keep two, or sometimes three, just so I have one to share. Um, as it's been hot out there, um, thank you. As it's been hot out there, I had um, sweat through one as I was out following up on some job sites. So I had the other one there just to make sure that, hey, everything was good. And my husband, who is awesome, this is one of the ones that we had originally tried. We liked it because it was, um, it's very lightweight and it's hot outside and it has a bit of stretch to it. But when we did the spray test, it sprayed right through the other side. So if we're gonna use it, we're gonna do it right. Um, different companies, again, locally, you might hear my dog in the background, we're just gonna ignore all of that joy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, outreach promotions, e favor mart, she's doing laps, but it's okay. <laughs> you, can, you can do it yourself. Uh, I do not sew. I, I do a lot of things well. Sewing is not one of them. She's happy. So, um, sewing is not one of them. So, there's rest of kind of instructions online that show you how to take two ponytail holders, a bandana, and you fold it up, and that's how that works. Just whatever works for you to keep you safe. Um, I think uh, some of the places, Joann's and um, Hobby Lobby and stuff have do-it-yourself do it kits. So I've been really excited to see people's creativity during this. I think I just skipped a slide and, oh, a minute, let me go back. Right. Sorry, y'all. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> you know, I have I have an IT degree, but it's not working at all for me. <laughs> well, Crystal, while you do that, um, we did have a couple of questions come in, so maybe I can ask you while we're while we're here. Um, one oh, of the questions okay. was um, about electrostatic disinfectant sprayers. If you had any thoughts on those. That's right there with um, the foggy and things like that. We have seen them used successfully, um, and it depends on the amount of space as to whether or not you would employ that. Because there's been a lot of information coming out, and it's almost like for three for three valid um, websites that I can get, you know, saying, "Hey, this is really good." I'll look on the CDC especially, and I'll look on the ISSA online site. 
and they have kind of mixed feelings, at least the articles that I've read, let me say it that way, have had some mixed feelings about it. And I think maybe part of it is still, it's so new and fighting the virus, maybe they don't want to say. So again, I would love to, why is this phone popping up now? Please excuse me. But um, I'd love to speak to them more offline because I want to be really specific when it comes to that information. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. And then the other question that we had come in was, um, if you had any thoughts on the air dryers and the restrooms, and if they are just kind of moving bad things around for people to breathe in. Okay, so supposedly uh, some of the air dryers have the blue light filter, or um, they're created like the, um, oh, what is it? The, the ones you see at AMC. Uh, the dry, it's not dry out, good grief. Um, dry, can't think of it. They make really cool air movers of different sorts. So some of them have um, specifically say that they're not going to do that because there's been a lot of information out that they're just a hub of germs. <laughs> the bacteria and stuff to stay around. So as you're shaking your hands and drying them off, then the germs and bacteria are just hanging out, having a great time. I, for us, um, and it almost depends on what information you're reading. I've just been avoiding them. Um, I just went, we went back to good old disposable paper towels mm -hmm. because that, that I know for sure. So the information for the, the hand dryers has kind of been all over the place. So we just stayed with, we thought we can't see it. And by the time we'd figure out whether or not it worked, it would be too late. So we just went back to paper towels. Sure. And, um, I, we just promised to plant some more trees. We're a part of Green Spot, so we have really green kind of, uh, we have recycled paper towels, we have green initiatives, and so for right now, we're just, we're not taking a chance, so we just decided to go back to paper towels, Great. recycled, recycled paper towels. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Um, the one question that we had and maybe this is something that you can answer a little bit more specifically um, later or offline for the question asker is um, what you're using for fogging. Um, I don't know if that's more of a product or a specific device. Um, so it's a device um, that we checked with our distributor. We use uh, Janton products. Well, technically Spart Spartan products, but we checked with our distributor and made sure that our machine I can't remember the place we ordered it it's a janitorial supply place and we check with them too and then we're using a product that's specific to it can i remember the name of it no nope. but it's specific to that particular sprayer so that we can make sure we're killing germs at the proper level but i can share that information and that contact of where we got it um, for them too because we had to wait a while there was a bit of a wait on them but i think they're back in stock now and some of the machines you know, it can be as inexpensive as, you know, a couple hundred dollars and some are a little bit more. They have like a, some are cordless, some are not. And then just for how amount of square feet in 15 minutes. And I don't remember the specifics, but I do have that information in this okay. share. Great. Anything else? Um, that looks like it's all for now. Okay. All right. So uh, gloves, I've seen a variety of this. Uh, gloves, pretty much, you don't have to wear them. Um, let me say it this way. If your comfort level is to wear the gloves and, and that's where you're at and that'll make you comfortable, then wear the gloves. Just, you know, be careful how you put them on and take them off. But we really don't need to wear them unless we're cleaning or uh, attending to a sick person. We've kind of seen them, you know, ATMs are still, it's a multiple touch point. And so there are different things when you go to the grocery store, multiple touch points. Um, some of them have been great about wiping off the, the machines in between, but some of them just don't have that kind of uh, bandwidth. So just with gloves, um, some people ask us, okay, disposable or reusable. We're kind of sticking with disposable at the moment because if you're wiping down things in an, in an effort to get rid of bacteria and viruses, we want to go ahead and just throw those away. If using reusable gloves, they would need to be washed. 
Uh, there's different ways you can watch them. It just depends, again, on your product, the packet, the one you have. Some you can just use some soap and water. Some may have a different type of instruction. But um, and a great way to find them if you're out is a lot of times the hardware stores have them. Um, sometimes they're a little pricier, but hey, if we're out, we're going to do what we need to do to make sure everybody's safe. So uh, the local hardware stores, DFS has been a, a awesome at keeping stock on cleaning supplies. And of course, Sam's Club and Costco have them in bulk. Uh, as you're putting on your mask, as you're putting on your gloves, Dawn and Doth is extremely important. And this is probably the one area that we teach on the most. Um, we're seeing people, you've got your mask on, like you did hand sanitizer, you put your mask on, you went into the grocery store, you touched different stuff, and we're seeing people, as soon as they come out, they want to take it off. And I'm encouraging people, I know it's hot and it's uncomfortable, but please just try and leave it on to get back in your car. Because if you take it off as soon as you come out of the store, you're still touching um, products that you're putting in your car. You're touching your car or truck handle. Um, and then you're touching your steering wheel and stuff. And then you're touching your face maybe. So we just try and encourage people, leave it on to get back in your car do your hand sanitizer and that should kind of mimic how you wash your hands and then take it off and hang it up properly and so that's going to help a lot same with the gloves um, we kind of were seeing people take them off so you want to make sure that you're taking them off and disposing of them without touching the outside or touching anything else especially in your car um, this has been a big question for us should employers provide um, ppe um, we would like to think that they do. I, we don't want to uh, mandate or speak to what other companies do. Um, different people have come through the virus in different ways. Um, so we would hope that just that culture of caring, the, the company would. But, you know, we have 20 some employees. Other companies have different um, budgets and things like that. If they aren't able to, maybe they can create a partnership with their employees and say, okay, well, this is what we can do. And if your employer doesn't, then I just encourage you to just go ahead and be safe for yourself. And we've heard all kinds of stories. So no matter what, you wanna make sure that you are, you're protected. For us, it was a way to keep our crew healthy, um, make sure that they felt comfortable. It's making our clients feel more comfortable. And um, our, our attorney also said legally, we want to make sure that there's no reason whatsoever that anybody, if it's just a, a really unique situation, um, because a person could pick it up anywhere. So we are, we keep running into businesses that have. And so we think that's the trend here in Central Ohio. And that comes right into our Creative Safe Travel Path. So we have to do the same, the PPE, you wanna prepare, plan, and execute. And again, you gotta keep it simple. Um, I have certain habits, like eating Cheetos in the afternoon. <laughs> hey, I'm probably not gonna let go of that habit anytime soon. So I don't wanna go into, I've gotta wash my hands, you know, don a mask, eat some Cheetos. I don't want it to be some big, hard thing to do. I want it to be easy. Wash my hands, eat my Cheetos, boom, I'm done. So that's what we're encouraging about using the PPE. As you return to work, just keep it simple. We want to say, well, what adjustments um, have you made? So if you're wearing your mask, do you have a backup? If you have a backup, where? Is it in your car? Do you need to keep one at your desk? Or what happens if the you know string on it breaks? So just kind of think, hmm, this is how I get through my day. This is and I've got to drop the kids off somewhere, or maybe not, but um, this is how my day flows, and these are the things I can do to make these easy adjustments so that we can do this as a team. And what fits your habits? What worked for me was different than what worked for my husband. I thought, okay, we're gonna do this, let's go. I got my hand sanitizer, my face. I played it out. His was a bit more organic. He had to kind of think about it, and it took him a little, he did his differently, and I had to be open to that too, but we both, implemented safety process and I was going to ask everybody what their favorite thing has been um, for our team it's been the expression through the mask because they don't like wearing them but they have enjoyed uh, showing the personality by having different kind of masks uh, safety check 
if as you're going back to work, what's new? Or if you're having people, um, we, we have small a small leadership team. So what's new for us is our leadership team is coming into the office and they're wearing masks. And then everybody, you know, gets the hand sanitizer coming in and you can hit the hand sanitizer on your way out. Uh, we're spraying down our doors and things uh, or using wet wipes three times a day. Our crew, when they come in for to restock, there's a, a new process for it now where we're social distancing and trying to make sure they don't have to touch anything other than what they need. So kind of just ask um, some of the, again, some of the businesses have been more on top of it than others. Um, and so it's led to some great conversations that we've had with our team about what are you looking for? That's a great way to start. If, if you're the one who's responsible for the PPE and things, ask your team. Uh, they were more chill and relaxed about it than I thought they'd be. I actually was the one going, I know, temperature checks, <laughs> wipes everybody, wear masks. And so that made me feel good that they trusted that, uh, our leadership enough to, that they knew we would keep them safe. So have, have conversations. Um, is the water easy to access or do you have to go through doorways where you've got to touch stuff? And if so, then what are you going to do on the way back? So we've had hand sanitizer. Um, we're encouraging that to be places if people have to touch different surfaces. Um, let's see. Oh, oh and we've had different um, people reporting that some people in their office are like, hey, hey okay, we're on board, we're going to do it. Team one, and we've had other who have resistant people who don't want to wear the mask, and so we need to understand. Okay, well, if I have um, Susie Sassafras come up and she doesn't want to wear a mask and she's always sneezing, usually due to allergies, what is my defense against that? And you need to just kind of plan that out in your head. You don't have to overreact, but just kind of say, "Hey, Sus, um, doing that social distance thing." <laughs> Love you, but you got to back up. So we can just kind of work together to make sure everybody stays safe. And then think about, well, what are we going to do for the lunch rooms? And, um, you know, who's responsible for cleaning? Uh, different people have said, well, my job is supposed to do this, or my um, team member is supposed to do that. But is that person going to be accountable for it? And if not, then it's worth it just to make the change. And, hey, maybe it has to be you, and that's okay. Um, I've awarded myself by I'm getting a massage next week. So, hey, it's a win-win. And again, um, with our team, we had a lot of talks. Uh, who's the resident expert? So in each of the different households, there were different people. Uh, some of them, some of the kids were all over it. Like, okay, mom, dad, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to uh, be safe. And so put the person who, if possible, put the person who likes to do it in charge of it. And again, we, we put an incentive behind it. Um, well, I made an incentive for myself. But uh, you can put an incentive behind it and say, okay, uh, Joe, you have to take care of this for now, but we're gonna switch it off in a month. Or um, this is the KPI around it that we're gonna have and you get an extra bonus at Christmas or something like that. Different, um, different ways to work through this all together. And again, uh, phones, door handles, coffee stations, candy dishes, printer stations, pens, pencils, touch points on desk. Uh, we, we took away the candy dish, we took away the pen holder, and we have wet wipes everywhere for um, anywhere where maybe we forgot something that would be shared. And, and we just frequently wash our hands. So again, team effort, who's responsible for what, what type of products do you need to keep? And then execute. Uh, that is my, I do have an escape plan for when people sneeze in public because I'm generally very mindful. I see people so, uh, physically distancing, which is great. Uh, if somebody sneezes, I don't immediately turn because if there's a mist, I don't want to catch it. Uh, as the slide shows, that spray can go pretty far, especially if for some reason they weren't in a mask. So I usually will just turn away, hold my breath, make sure I'm physically distanced, and then kind of look around and say, I hope that's allergies. But just kind of be aware. Uh, and then just to tell you real quick again about us, uh, we do construction sites. We do have uh, disinfection cleans, construction rough cleans and all that. And I'm really excited to um, hopefully you all will reach out through our email there because I'd love to have more uh, discussion and dialogue about the electric static. And um, oh, there's one other one that was really good that I'd love to share information about. We do commercial cleaning. Uh, we are. <laughs> We are full over the next couple of months, but we are also doing advisory service. Uh, those are kind of, we're scheduled out to September with those. 
and then we do business consultation. We love to grow businesses and help people realize their dreams. Uh, if you have uh, any interest, we are doing complimentary strategy sessions. Those are, um, I think we're scheduled out to maybe September, October for those. And uh, we have a monthly newsletter uh, that should drop again at the end of next month. So that's all I have. Wonderful. Thank you, Crystal. That was um, some really, really great information. and. Um, some great information for at home and at work, I think, because there are certain things that I'm like, oh, we probably need to do that around my house, too. Um, <laughs> so I just great. wanted to let everybody know, again, that we are recording this. We did um, record this, and it will be available on our trustlocal.org website. Um, we also have on our Center for Character Ethics website um, a list of accredited businesses who are offering um, PPE and services surrounding going back to work. Um, so Crystal will have to make sure that we get all of your information uploaded onto that as well um, so people can reach out to you. But um, again, if you have specific um, questions for Crystal, please don't hesitate to reach out to her. If you, um, you know, go back to work today and then think, oh gosh, I don't remember her email address, please don't hesitate to reach out to um, us at the BBB. We are still here um, for everybody and we're working remotely. So um, we're here to help however anybody needs it. Um, so if there aren't any further questions, which I don't think um, I see any questions, oh, we did get a comment that it was a great presentation. So thank you, Crystal. Um, thank you. <laughs> so again, um, everybody, please stay safe. And with that, I think I'll just say thank you again and have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.